Well, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I believe you have come into today's day six session. Lord, teach us to pray with the praises of God. You know, we either confess the problem or we confess the promise and we confess the praise. And so today, Jerry Morrow, I love this message. Brother Srillo, live this. Teresa, live this. It's a message that's going to tell us how to pray a prayer that it is impossible for God not to answer. Amen. After today, you're going to be living in a whole new dimension. You're going to know that you know that you know that God hears your prayers, that he answers your prayers with awesome deeds. It's absolutely going to change your life. I encourage you stay tuned in. You just lay everything else aside and you'll want to get a hold of this uh, message, this impartation that Dr. Cirillo shares. No unanswered prayer. You know, honey, I love this. And so you just get ready because we're going to go right into the message. Brother Srillo, straight out of the gates today is going to release a prophetic anointing. God spoke to Morris Srillo. I was there as he began to share this, that God said, I'm releasing an end time prophetic prayer anointing. And one of the things we're learning in this school of ministry is that prayer is not the work of a man. Prayer is, true prayer, is prayer that is prayed by the Holy Spirit according to the will of God, which every prayer the Holy Spirit prays is according to the will of God through the man and through the woman of God that is simply yielding themselves. And so, Lord, thank you today as we connect with your uh, word today. We thank you for Dr. Morris. God, we are about to hear an avalanche of scriptures, God of strength from your Holy Spirit. So Lord, as Morris would say so many times, let us open our spirits wide as once again, we welcome God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. I believe that we're living in the time when the last great, incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to come in answer to the intercessory prayers of the people of God. <laughs> Papa loves you. But if I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. There are not 10% of the people of God in our churches here in America that are praying for revival. In fact, the statistics of the amount of time that people spend in prayer is absolutely terrible. They tell us that the average preacher does not spend 10 minutes a day in prayer. They tell us that the average minister doesn't spend 30 minutes a day in the Word. We're talking about statistics that come from people who go out and do these types of surveys. But I'm telling you tonight, in Jesus' name, God has given to me a prophetic word. He said, I am about to release a powerful prophetic end time prayer anointing upon my people that is going to cause them from their innermost beings to begin to pray and cry out to me as never before. That anointing 
is now. I'm telling you, there's something about this word tonight. Tonight, with every fiber of my being, we are going to enter into, and I'm going to talk to you tonight on a spiritual dynamic to overcome unanswered prayer because we are going to hit the devil right between the eyes tonight saying, no unanswered prayer. prayer. Now, the big question is this, Brother Cirillo, how do we deal with this incredible reality, unanswered prayer. When you have prayed and when you have fasted for something that you believe with every fiber of your being lines up with the will of God, but you still have not received the answer The big question, how do you react? Do you become discouraged? Do you become weary? Do you begin to wonder and allow doubt to enter in? Is it really God who hears you? Or are you convinced because you have not received the answer that this is maybe not God's will? Does your faith in God's promise begin to wane? In our pursuit here in this school of ministry, on learning how to pray powerful dimensions of prayer that Jesus taught and that Jesus demonstrated, we are going to have to learn how to overcome unanswered prayer. Somebody say, no unanswered prayer. I am going to make a very strong prophetic statement to you tonight. It's very daring, but I'm going to make it anyhow because God told me to tell it to you. It is not God's will for you to live with one unanswered prayer. I want to make a prophecy to you tonight. We're going to continue the prophecies that God gave to me for you that I gave to you last night that I want to give you one more tonight because I didn't give them all to you last night. Somebody say, I'm ready. ready. God is raising up a people today who are going to build a living memorial to him through answered prayer. But I tell you tonight that Jehovah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, that God is our God. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he taught and demonstrated a level of prayer that was unique. It was different than what we see today. It was a prayer experience that had 100% answers to prayer. There never was one 
absolute failure in the prayer life of Jesus. And there was no struggle. Unanswered prayer was not a concept. It wasn't even a consideration. Jesus prayed and the Father answered every time. Did you ever read John 11, 41, where Jesus said, Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me and I know that you hear me 50% of the time. Oh no. Father, I know that you have heard me when I prayed and this is just one of those rare occasions where you are hearing me now. No, he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you hear me. Somebody shouted. Always. Somebody say no unanswered prayer. Now, Jesus lived in this dimension where the Father always heard him and always answered his prayers. And there never was one exception. And I believe with every fiber of my being that God has a position for us in the body of Christ that is equal to the position that he gave to his son, that God the Father would hear us always. Oh, I don't think you heard what I said. Now, I want you to hold this in your spirit. Somebody say, God said. God said. Listen, I'm reading to you from the book of Jeremiah and the 32nd verse, 32nd chapter, 27th verse. No, I think I'll go back to Jeremiah 33, 3 first. God said, call unto me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Somebody say, there's absolutely nothing impossible with God. Somebody say, God said. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jesus said, Matthew 19, 26. But with God, all things are possible. Isaiah 65, 24. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Somebody said, God made that promise. Somebody said, God said. Jesus said, all things. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, Matthew 21, 22. Somebody say all things. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. Somebody say all things. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. Believing ye shall receive them. God has a universal law concerning prayer. And it is this, everyone who asks receives. Somebody say, no unanswered prayer. Now, what and how are we gonna answer the big question? And that is, what is our response when we don't receive an answer that we've expected? We're gonna go deep into a spiritual dynamic 
to overcome this unanswered prayer. This is one of what I believe is one of the greatest, biggest tragedies of the church today. God said to me upstairs in my room, and I wrote this down. He said to me, son, there are so many of my people who have resigned themselves to defeat, and they have settled to live with unanswered prayer. Now, you are going to cross over and you are not going to be satisfied from this prayer conference on. You are never going to be satisfied ever again to live with unanswered prayer. Somebody say, no unanswered prayer. Now, it's a good thing I brought these down here because this light is terrible. And if I didn't have these, I'd have to speak in extemporaneously to you, which I would do anyhow. <laughs> there are hindrances to prayer. We all know that. We're not... insensitive to them. There's lack of faith. There's asking with the wrong motives. Unconfessed sin. Disobedience. Unforgiveness. But I'm going to shock you here tonight. Are you ready for a big shock? One of the greatest reasons behind unanswered prayer, you know what it is? It's spiritual laziness. Now you don't have to say amen, you can just say ouch. Say what are you talking about brother Sol? I'm talking about you that give up and you offer the excuse, oh well, it must be God's will. I've prayed and the answer didn't come. Whenever we know that when we pray in accordance to God's will, we'll receive the answer. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, somebody say anything, according to his will, and this is the key to break through in prayer. It is praying in the will of God. Now, you say, Brother Shiloh, can I do that? Absolutely, 100% of the time. Why be so stupid to pray out of the will of God when you know God's not gonna answer a prayer that's prayed out of his will? Come on, somebody shout, no unanswered prayer. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us and we know that he hears us and whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Somebody say, I know that 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 when I pray in the will of God God hears me and he answers my prayers 100% of the time no unanswered prayer how many of you believe God speaks to people today? Yes. You believe that? Yes. God said, son, 
I want you to tell my people, we have got to get back to the tenacity of our faith. We've got to cross over from this living with forfeited victories. I don't think you heard what I said. I didn't say that. God said it. He told me, he said, you tell my people to stop living with forfeited victories. I never intended for them to live with forfeited victories. I intend for them to live with 100% answers to their prayers. Oh my God, somebody give him praise. There are scores of us in this building tonight. Something's gonna change for us in the atmosphere. Something's gonna change for us in the spirit world. We've given up. We're living with forfeited victories. There are scores of you that have given up on your marriages. You've given up on your rebellious children. You've given up on your unsaved loved ones and you're forfeiting God's provision and the answers to the prayers that you have prayed because you're failing to persevere. I want you to put this in your spirit, Matthew 7, seventh verse, eighth verse. Somebody say Matthew 7, 7, and 8. Matthew 7, 7, 8. Listen to it. Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be open to you. Somebody say God said that. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be open. Somebody say, spiritual perseverance. That's the first step. Now I want you to notice, I didn't say, perseverance I said spiritual perseverance because there's a big difference between natural perseverance and spiritual perseverance let's go to Luke 18 Jesus is speaking Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray, and I'm reading this from the Amplified Version. It has just a little stronger meaning. And Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward. Somebody say, God hasn't given to me the spirit of fear. He gave them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, not to faint, not to lose heart and not to give up. Somebody said, I think I will take the first step. And I will spiritually persevere. Strong persistence. Strong determination. The 
first steps to a spiritual dynamic to overcome unanswered prayer. If we don't receive the answer to our prayer the first time, beloved, we don't quit, we pray again. I said if we don't receive it the second time, we don't quit, we pray it again. Somebody say it's a lack of faith. Somebody said that. But surely it's not a lack of faith if Jesus taught us to do it. I said if Jesus taught us to do it, it's not a lack of faith. If you don't get it the first time, you pray again. You don't get it the second time, you pray it again. You don't get it the fourth time, you pray it again. Or even a hundred times, we persevere in faith until we receive it if we know it is God's will. Oh, sakababataba. Somebody lift your hand and give him praise. Mark eleven twenty four. Listen to it. What things soever you desire. Now, either the Bible is the word of God or Jesus spoke the truth or he was the biggest liar that ever lived. Mark eleven twenty four. Don't look at me with that school of ministry look. <laughs> what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Oh, somebody put your hand up and give him a big shout. Now, I don't know whether you are ready to move into this kind of shameless perseverance. After the disciples approached Jesus in Luke and Jesus replied to their request, do you remember? Luke 11, 1, and they cried out to him, Lord, teach us to pray. He gave to them, after he gave them the Lord's prayer, he gave to them a parable. Luke 11, 5 and 6, let me read it to you. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journey to come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. But Jesus teaching the parable said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Now, the word importunity 
is a tremendous word. When you translate it, it means shamelessness. It refers to the persistent determination in prayer that will not be put to shame by any apparent refusal or seemingly delay on God's part. Let's go look at it in the Amplified Version. I tell you, as he's teaching this parable, although he will not get up and supply him anything because he is his friend, now watch this, yet because of his shameless persistence and insistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus taught this parable about persistency in prayer right after the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. In other words, they asked for it and they got it. Jesus said, you want to know? I'm going to tell you, don't be ashamed. Ask, seek, knock. Keep on coming on until somebody up there opens the door and gives you what you are praying for. Oh, Sakabababahanda, put your hand up and speak in other tongues. Take two or three seconds. Somebody say, shameless perseverance. perseverance. Now, it's incredible how that in this illustration, somebody say, shameless perseverance. perseverance. That refuses to give up. Jesus' teaching is very clear. He says, we do not, when we do not immediately receive an answer to our prayers, or when we have a prolonged delay, we must not allow ourselves to become weary or spiritually lazy and give up. With the same persistence, we are to continue to come before God Press our petitions with increased intensity. Now, let me show you what and how that increased intensity works. I call it holy wrestling. It's not an impulse. It's not a mere earnestness of the soul. It's an inward force, a faculty implanted inside us, and it's aroused by the Holy Spirit. It's the intercession of the Spirit of God inside us. God told me to tell you, he said, when you get to this place here tonight in the message, my son, he said, tell my people, don't let the natural mind take over. This is not human effort. It is the faith of God in us that will not be denied. Yay. 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 We hold on. We press on. We wait in faith. It's actually taking hold of God himself and not letting letting go. Jacob was one of God's holy wrestlers. You remember how he refused to let go? 
Elijah was one of God's holy wrestlers. He prayed seven times in succession before he prevailed and before God opened the heavens and sent the rain. Three and a half years of famine and drought came to an end after he prophesied to King Ahab that it was going to rain. Elijah went up to the top of the Mount of Carmel and he began to do what? First Kings 18, 42. He cast himself down on the earth. He put his face between his knees and he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, there's nothing. He said, go back again. He said, there's nothing. He said, go back again. He said, there's nothing. He said, go back again. He said, there's a shameless persistence upon me. I have a prophetic prayer anointing. Go back again. Seven times. Finally, he said, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. It's here, Elijah. Elijah didn't know how long it was going to take. There was nothing virtuous about seven. It could have been 70. I said it could have been 70. He didn't know how long it was going to take. Daniel didn't know how long it was going to take. He was one of God's holy wrestlers. He prayed and fasted for 21 days. Somebody say, I don't know how long it's going to take. But I've got shameless persistence. Strange thing about this prayer of Daniel, it was heard the first day. But Daniel didn't know it. I wonder how many of us are living with forfeited victories. God's already heard our prayer. Daniel could have stopped. He could have stopped at the 15th day. He could have said, I've been fasting and praying for 15 days and God hasn't responded. I might as well stop. He didn't know how long it was going to take, but after the 21st day, an angel came. The angel told Daniel that after the first day, his prayer was heard, but that he had been wrestling with a demonic principality for 21 days. You don't know what's going on up there in the spirit world that's encountering the prayers that you are sending up to God. This thing isn't now I lay me down to sleep, my brother, my sister. We are wrestling against principalities and powers, spiritual wickednesses which are in the high places of the earth. Oh, kababa sandarabaha. Somebody put your hands up and begin to speak in other tongues. Shameless persistence. Have you ever wondered what would have ever happened if Daniel had quit after the second day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the eighth day, the tenth day? You say, Brother Shula, what are we talking about? We're talking about a spiritual dynamic to overcome unanswered prayer. Shameless persistence. We're talking about prayer that refuses to give up. No unanswered prayer. I said no unanswered prayer. We're not forfeiting our marriages. We're not forfeiting our healing. We're not forfeiting the need of our finances. We are not living with forfeited victories. We are praying prayers that refuse 
refused to give up. Well, somebody say, I am praying prayers that refuse to give up. I love the four letters, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. And that's what we're doing, Jerry Morrow, in this school of ministry. We are learning to be persistent. We're learning to persevere. We are learning to push back the resistance. I love in Psalms, I think it's in the 56th Psalm, he says, David says that my enemies will retreat when I call upon you. For this I know, God is on my side. It's in Psalms 56. And I tell you today, the Lord is on your side. The same God that was on Jacob's side, the same God that was on Elijah's side, the same God that was on Daniel's side. Three men that wrestled in prayer and simply prayed until something happened. <laughs> amen, amen. What an encouragement this segment was. And I love what Dr. Cirillo says. It's just such a freeing statement. He says, the anointing is God doing something through us Come on. that we cannot do ourselves. The power is from God, not of ourselves. And it gives us the ability to overcome unanswered prayer. We can set our mind for 100 percent victory. We can set our mind on the promises of God that are yea and amen. And I love what Dr. Cirillo taught us. This was something that I learned from Dr. Cirillo years ago, and it has totally changed my prayer life. He says the key to breakthrough in prayer is praying the will of God. And I've learned that praying in the spirit is praying the will of God. Amen. It's according to the word of God. And I, I I was challenged uh, a few months ago uh, to really just pray an hour in the Holy Spirit. I have encountered just a new strength in my inner man, and I have known with such great confidence that I am praying according to the will of God. I've seen incredible answers to prayer. And so I love what Dr. Cirillo teaches. We're just going to continue praying until we see the right answer that we're <laughs> the promise of God fulfilled. Come on. You know, the Apostle Paul said, I pray in the spirit more than you all. You cannot pray too much in the Holy Spirit. And I just want to encourage you today. Not only do you strengthen yourself and not only do you pray according to the will of God when you pray in the spirit, but there is also a powerful weapon that Dr. Strillo has been revealing to us and that is the weapon of the Word of God. You see, faith begins at the point that the will of God is understood and God's Word is God's will. So I wanna to say to you today, the greatest investment that you can make in your life is spending a little more time in the Word of God and establishing God's voice as the greatest voice in your life. And so that's really that's why. so good, honey. That I, is so good. <laughs> it's the truth because there are two voices over your life. There is the voice that says, oh no, that prayer is not going to be answered. That's the voice of the accuser. That's the voice of the devil. His job is to accuse God. His job is to cause you to uh, be discouraged, to push you away from God's destiny. But then there's the greater voice the voice of the intercessor. What is Jesus doing right now? The same thing that we can be doing, and that is he is praying for <laughs> you. And so you can even just thank him today for uh, his faithfulness. He is a great, merciful, faithful high priest. I want you to know God will never give up on you and there's not a prayer that you have prayed you know honey I was reading in the scriptures just the other day where literally every tear that we shed the Bible says not only does God collect it but it is written in a book every struggle the same Psalm said I think it's Psalm 56 again that every struggle God writes in a book 
We do not serve a God. The Bible says that he is moved by the feeling of our infirmities. What that means is that God is drawn to you, even in your place of weakness, even in your place of doubt, even in your place of discouragement. But I just have to say, uh, the greatest thing that you can put to feed the fire of your faith, R.W. Shambach, one of Morris and Teresa's dearest friends who's in heaven in glory, I can't even imagine what that is like right now. He would say this so many times over and over again. He would say, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. And so listen, I want to encourage you, get the download. These are Morris Cirillo's 70 plus years of prayer secrets. Lord, teach us to pray. Get the book, get the new level of strategic spiritual warfare prayer. You see, what we focus on, what we study, what we sow into our life is what we reap. And so here we are in a school of ministry saying, Lord, take me to a new level of strategic. What does strategic mean? Strategic means victorious. Strategic means prayer that avails much. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer. So there is prayer that is not as effective as other types of prayer. So is it not worth investing in praying the kinds of prayers that are going to be strategic and going to be effective? This is a book you could read in maybe several hours and it will take your prayer life to a new level of strategic spiritual warfare. And finally, one of the great spiritual resources that the Lord anointed Dr. Cirillo to produce this incredible prayer study reference Bible. This was a copy from Brother Cirillo's office. I love the note that I'm reading right here in it. It says, first of all, that God has revealed that he will bring us into a new dimension of authority in our prayers, where our words spoken with authority and invested in the promises of God will enable us to confront every stronghold of the enemy. And then Morris Cirillo's hand note, we are in a spiritual battle. And I want to encourage you, this is normally a $100 resource. And just during this school of ministry, look, get a copy for your pastor, get a copy for someone you know that wants God to take their prayer life to a whole nother level. Get yourself a copy just during this school of ministry for your gift of just $50, you can receive the full Morris Cirillo, God's Victorious Army Prayer Bible. Well, honey, I cannot wait. Tomorrow is power packed, incredible. Invite somebody. We're going to take you as we're closing this school of ministry into, without a doubt, the most powerful spiritual warfare prayer conference that I have ever been a part of. Over 15,000 people came to Chicago, Illinois for a powerful conference on waging and winning spiritual warfare. And tomorrow, Brother Shrill is gonna be sharing the miracle of what God did in Haiti as Morris Cirillo simply did what the prophet Jeremiah did, and that is spoke the word of God. So Lord, we thank you, God, today. Lord, for the privilege of being a part of your end time plan. Thank you that you have not planned uh, any defeats for us. Lord, raise the level of our uh, prayer life. Lord, let there be a fresh anointing, even as Morris Rillo has prophesied. Lord, a great end time prayer anointing to be released upon your people. Lord, we thank you for answers to prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we will never give up, that we'll be persistent in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. And amen. Wow. Well, on behalf of David Cirillo, on behalf of our legacy team, on behalf of beautiful wife, Jerry, who is the director of our in-home prayer ministry. We are a ministry that believes in the power of prayer. We see the power of answered prayer every day. Over 1,000 volunteer 
prayer ministers who are in the United States and Canada receiving thousands of prayer calls and seeing thousands of miracle answers to prayer. Let me just leave you with this encouragement. God's word declares, God speaking, call unto me. I want you to know we are under an amazing reward challenge. God says, call unto me and I will answer you. I want you to know, God is not a God that likes to play games. God is a God who, if you do what he says to do, he will do what he says he will do. Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Lord, let it be in the life of every one of our students as they call upon you today. In Jesus' name, cannot wait to see you tomorrow live from your Morris Cirillo International Legacy Center in Jesus' name.